live from Barcelona, Spain, it's theCUBE, covering Cisco Live Europe. Brought to you by Cisco and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back everyone, live here in Barcelona, this is theCUBE's exclusive coverage of Cisco Live 2019. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, my co-host for the week, and Stu Miniman, who's also here doing interviews. Our next two guests is Mike Bundy, Senior Director of Global Cisco Alliance with Pure Storage, and Z, who's in charge of product strategy with Cisco. Welcome to theCUBE, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having us here. Welcome, so, thank you. So, we're in the DevNet zone, it's packed with people learning, real use cases, get, getting, rolling up their sleeves. Talk about the Cisco Pure relationship. How do you guys fit into all this? What's the alliance? You want to start? Sure, so we have a partnership with Cisco, uh, primarily around a, a solution called FlashStack in the converged infrastructure space. And uh, most recently, uh, we've evolved a new uh, use case and application together uh, for artificial intelligence that Z's business unit have just released, a new platform uh, that works with Cisco and NVIDIA uh, to accomplish you know, customer application needs, and mainly in machine learning, but, but all aspects of artificial intelligence, so. So AI is obviously hot trend in machine learning, but today at Cisco, the big story was, it's not about the data center as much anymore as it's the data at the center yep. of the value proposition, which spans the on-premises, IOT edge, and cl multiple yep. clouds. Right. So data now is everywhere, you got to store it, so you gotta, it's going to yes. store it in the cloud, it's on-premise, so data at the center means a lot of things. You can program with it, it's got to be addressable, and it has to be smart and aware, and take advantage of the networking. So with all that as a background, backdrop, what is the AI approach? How should people think about AI in context to storing data, using data, not just moving packets from point A to point B, but you're storing it, you're pulling it out, you're integrating into applications, a lot of moving parts there. What's the? Yeah, you got a really good point here. When people think about machine learning, traditionally, they just think about training. But we look at this more than just training. It's the whole data pipeline that starts with collecting the data, store the data, analyze the data, train the data, and then deploy it. And then put the data back. So it's really a very, it's a cycle there, right? Yeah. It's, it's where you need to consider how you actually collect the data from the edge, how you store them in the speed that you can and give the data to the training side. So I believe when we work with Pure, we try to create this as a whole data pipeline and thinking about the entire data movement and the storage need that we look at here. So we're in the DevNet zone and I'm looking at the machine learning with Python, ML library, <laughs> TensorFlow, <laughs> Ap Apache Spark, a lot of this data science type stuff. Yep. Right. But increasingly, AI is a workload that's going mainstream. But what are the trends that you guys are seeing in terms of you know, traditional IT's involvement? Is it still sort of AI off on an island? What are you, what are you seeing there? So I'll take a, take a gas, uh, stab at it. So, you know, really every major company industry that we work with have, you know, AI initiatives. It's, it's the core of the future for their business. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what we're trying to do is partner with IT to get ahead of the large infrastructure demands that will come from those smaller uh, innovative projects that are in pilot mode um, so that they are a partner to the business and the data scientists rather than you know, a laggard in the business the way that you know, sometimes the, the reputation that, that IT gets. So we want to be the infrastructure solid, you know, like a cloud-like experience for the data scientists so they can worry more about the applications, the data, what it means to the business and less about the infrastructure. So. Okay, yeah. and, and so you guys are trying to simplify that infrastructure, whether it's converged infrastructure and you know, other sort of unifying uh, approaches. Is, are you seeing the shift of sort of that heavy lifting of people now shifting resources to new workloads like AI? Um, maybe you could discuss yeah. what the trends are there. Yeah, absolutely. So I think AI started with more like a data science experiment, right? You see one or two data science, a couple of data science experimenting. Now it's really getting into mainstream. More and more people are put into that. And as, right. um, as I apologize. Mike. Mike. <laughs> Mike. Can we restart that question? <laughs> <laughs> my deep apology. I need a GPU or something in my brain, and, and I need to store that data better. You're on I, Fortnite, go ahead. Yes, so as Mike has said earlier on, right, it's, it's not just a data scientist, it's actually an IT challenge as well. And I think with Cisco, what we're trying to do with Pure here is, you know the Cisco thing we're saying, we're bridge, right? We want to bridge the gap between the data scientists and the IT, mm. and make it 
not just ex AI as an experiment, but AI at scale, at production level, and be ready to actually create real impact with the technology infrastructure that we can enable. Mike, talk about Pure's position. You guys have announced uh, Pure in the cloud. Yes. You're seeing that software focus. Software is the key here, right? You're getting Absolutely. into a software model. AI and machine learning, all these things we're talking about is software. Data is now available to be addressed and right. managed in that software life cycle. How is this the role of the software for you guys with converged infrastructure at the center of all the Cisco announcements? You heard it on stage today. Sure. We're converged infrastructure to the edge. Yeah, so if you look at the, the platform that we've built, uh, it's, it's referenced by being called the Data Hub. The Data Hub has a very tight synergy with all the applications you're referring to, Spark, TensorFlow, et cetera, et cetera, Cafe. So we look at it as the next generation analytics and the platform has a, a super layer on top of all those applications uh, because that, that's going to really make the, the integration possible for the data scientists so they can go quicker and faster. What we're trying to do underneath that is use the data hub that no matter what the size, whether it's small data, large data, um, transaction based or more bulk data warehouse type applications, you know, the, the data hub and the flash blade solution are need handle all of that very, very different and probably more optimized and, and easier than, you know, traditional legacy infrastructures, even tradition, even, even, even flash, you know, from some of our yeah. competitors because, you know, we, we built this a purpose built application yeah. for that, you know, not trying to go yeah. backwards in terms of, you yeah. know, technology. So I want to so. put both of you guys on the spot for a question. Um, we hear infrastructure as code for going on many, many years since the Cube started nine years ago. Infrastructure as code, now it's here. The network's programmable, infrastructure's programmable, storage is programmable. When a customer or someone asks you, how is infrastructure, networks, and storage programmable, and what do I do? I'm, I used to, used to provision storage, I've got servers, I'm going to the cloud. What do I do? How do I become AI enabled so that I can program the infrastructure? How do you guys answer that question? So a lot of that comes to the infrastructure management layer, right? How do you actually, using policy and using the right infrastructure management to make the right configuration you want. And I think one thing from programmability is also flexibility. Instead of having just a fixed configuration, what we're doing with Pure here is really having that flexibility, right? Where you can put pure storage, different kind of storage with different kind of Com compute that we have, no matter it's, we're talking about two RUs or four RU, that kind of compute power is different and can max with a different storage depending on what the customer use case is. So that flexibility driven by the, driven to the pro programmability that is managed by the infrastructure management layer. And we're extending that, so Pure and Cisco's infrastructure management actually tying together, it's really a single pane of glass with Intersight that we can actually manage both Pure and Cisco. That's the programmability that we're talking and about. And your customers here. get pure storage, end-to-end -end manageability. With the Cisco compute, it's a single pane of glass. Oh, okay. So right. what do I buy? I want to get started. What, what, do you, what do you got for me? What, what do you have? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty simple. It's three basic components. Um, you know, Cisco compute and a platform for machine learning uh, that's powered by NVIDIA GPUs. Mm -hmm. uh, Cisco FlashBlade, which is the data hub and storage component and then network connectivity from the number one network provider in the world, from uh -huh. Cisco. Very simple. And it's a SKU, it's a solution. Yep, it's so very, very SKU, um, you know, it's, it's very simple, uh, it's data driven, so you know, it's not tied to a specific SKU, it's more flexible than that, so you yeah, have okay. the better optimization of the network, you know, you don't buy a 1000 series X well, and okay. then only use 50% of it, it's very customizable. Uh, okay, so I can customize it for my, whatever, data science team, or my yes. IT workloads and provision it for multi-purpose, same way a service provider yeah. would if you're a large IT organization. Trend, right. trend around breaking silos has been being discussed heavily yep. when you talk about you know, multiple clouds, on-premise and cloud and edge all coming together. Yes. How should companies think about their data architecture? Mm. On, because silos are good for certain things, but, you, but to make multi-cloud work and all this end-to-end -end and intent-based networking and all the power of AIs around the corner, you got to have the data out there. Right. And it's got to be horizontally scalable, if you yeah. will. How do you break down those silos? What's your advice? Is there a use case is there an archi for an architecture? Yeah, well, I, I think it's a, a classic example of how IT has evolved to not think just silos and be multi-cloud. Uh, so, you know, what we advocate is, is you have a data platform that transpires the entire 
community, whether it's development, test, engineering, production applications, um, and that you know runs holistically across the uh, entire organization. That would include on-prem. It would include integration with the cloud because most you know companies now require that. Uh, so you can have different levels of uh, high availability or lower cost if your data needs to be archived. So it, it's really you know building and thinking about the data is a platform yeah. across the industry, across the uh, the company, and not just you know silos for various. So replication never goes away. <laughs> never goes away. <laughs> it's going to be around for a long, long yes. time. Dev test never goes away either. So. <laughs> yeah. Your thoughts on, on yeah, this? Yeah. So I think on top of that, it. We believe where your infrastructure should go is where the data goes, right? You want to follow the, where the data is and that's exactly why we want to partner with Pure here because we see a lot of the data are, sit, are sitting today in the very important infrastructure which is built by Pure Storage and we want to make sure that we're not just building a silo box sitting there where you have yeah. to put the data in there all the time but actually connect our server with Pure Storage in the most manageable way and for IT, it's the same kind of management layer. You're not thinking about, oh, I have to manage all the silo box yeah. or the shadow IT that some data scientists would have under their desk, right? That's the least thing you want it. And the other thing that came up in the keynote today, which we've been saying on theCUBE and all the experts you know, reaffirm is moving data costs money. You got latency costs and also just costs to move traffic around. Yeah. So moving compute to the edge or moving compute to the data has been a big hot yep. trend. How has the compute equation changed? Because I got storage, I'm, just moving, I'm not just moving packets around, I'm storing it, I'm moving it around. How does it change the compute? Does it put more emphasis on the compute? It's, it's definitely putting a lot more emphasis on compute. I think it's where you want a compute to happen, right? You can put all the data and want it to happen in the center place, that's fine if that's the way you want to manage it. If you have, if you have already simplified the data, you want to put it in that way. If you want to do it at the edge, near where the data source is, you can also do the cleaning there. So yeah. we want to make sure that no matter how you want to manage it, we have the portfolio that can actually help you to manage yeah. that. And as alternative uh, alternate processors, uh, you mentioned NVIDIA, you exactly. guys are the first to yeah. do a deal with them. So. And, yep. and, other, and other ways too, I mean, you've got to take advantage of technologies like Kubernetes as an example. Yes. So you can move the containers where they need to be and have policy managers for the compute requirements yeah. and also you know, storage and so you don't have contention or data in uh, integrity issues. So yeah. you know, awesome. embracing those technologies in a multi-cloud world is, is very, very Mike, essential. Mike, I want to ask you a question around customer trends. What are you yes. seeing as a pattern from a customer standpoint as they prepare for AI and start refactoring some of their IT and or resources? Is there a certain use case that they set up with Pure in terms of how they set up their storage? Is it uh, different by customer? Is there a common trend um, that you see? Yeah, there, there are some commonalities, you know, like uh, take financial services, quant trading as an example. We have a number of customers that leverage our platform for that because it's very, uh, you know, time sensitive, high availability data. So really I think the customers, the, the trend overall of that would be step back, take a look at your data and focus on how can I correlate and organize that um, and really get it ready so that whatever platform you use from a storage standpoint, you're, you're thinking about you know, all aspects of data and get it in a format, in a form where you can manage and catalog because that's kind of essential. I mean, it, it really thing. highlights all the key things that have been saying in storage for a long time. Yeah. High availability, integrity of the data, and now you've got application developers programming with data. Yes. Yep. This is a whole, with APIs now, you're yeah. slinging APIs around like it's a ton of- way it should be. It's the way it should be. Right. Yeah. This is like Nirvana, finally yes. got here. <laughs> yeah. How far along are we in the progress? How far, are we early, are we moving the needle? Where are the customers? You mean in terms of the partnership? Partnership, in terms of the AI customer, ML. AI in general, you guys working together, so you got, you got storage, you got networking and compute all kind of working together. It has to be flexible, elastic, like the cloud. Um, I, my feeling, Mike can correct me, or you can disagree I'll with me. I'll use data. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think uh, right now, if we look at all the what the analysts are saying and what we're saying, I think most of the companies, more than 50% of companies, either have deployed AML or are considering yeah. in plan of deploying that, right? But having said that, we do see that we're still at a relatively early yeah. stage because the challenges of making AI deployment at scale where data scientists and IT are really working together, yeah. right? You need that level of security and that level of scale of infrastructure and software involving yeah. DevNet. So my feeling is we're still at a relatively early yeah. stage. I think we are in the early adopter phase. Um, you know, we've had customers for the last two years that have really been driving this. We work with about seven of the automated car yeah. um, 
you know, driving uh, companies. But, you know, if you look at the, uh, the data from Morgan Stanley and other analysts, there's about a $13 billion um, infrastructure that's required for AI over the next three years, from 2019 to 2021. So, you know, that is probably 6X, 7X what it is today. So we haven't quite hit that. So people are doing their homework yeah. right now, setting up the architecture. It's the leader. It's leaders in the industry, not yeah. the yeah. mainstream. Yeah. Got it. yeah, and then yeah. everybody else is going to close that gap. Absolutely. And that's where you guys come in, is helping them At do scale. that. At scale. That's, yeah. Yeah. that's, literally what, we wanted, that's like what we built this, this platform yeah. with Cisco on, uh, is really the flash stack for AI is around scale uh, for, you know, tens and, 20s of petabytes of data mm. yeah. that will be required for these and applications. And it's a targeted yeah. solution for AI yes. with all the integration pieces with Cisco built in. Yes. Yep. Great, yes. awesome. Well, keep track of it, it looks exciting. We think, awesome. yeah, it's cliche to say future proof, but this in this case, it literally is preparing for that future. The bridge to yes. the future. <laughs> yes. You know, as the new Absolutely. saying at Cisco goes. It's the Cube coverage here live in Barcelona. We'll be back with more live coverage after the short break. Thanks for watching. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Stay with us. Thank you.